Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We are here with Whiskey and Tequila. We can't see because she's behind Whiskey, but we're here with both dogs today to talk a little bit more about training a livestock guardian. Now, I have meant to make more videos about it and I kind of slacked off on that because I was distracted by other things. It is auction season here. And so we've been doing livestock auctions and I've been selling baby bunnies and all kinds of stuff like that. So I kind of got distracted. So back on track, let's talk about the training of a livestock guardian. And whiskey here smells a little bit like a skunk. Because there's a friend skunk in the bush that they think is fun. But <laughs> he stinks. We're not going to talk about that. Anyway, training a livestock guardian is different than training most dogs. Yes, 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 you're a good dog. So it's quite different because yes, they need basic obedience. Yes, they need socialization. Yeah, they need to be able to come when called, but sometimes they have to ignore you. So primarily what ends up happening is you want a dog that can think for herself. Her job is to think for herself because her job is to be out there, not on a leash, not on a chain, not locked in the house or in the barn. She is out there to protect her livestock and her property from things like um, coyotes, which we have a lot, foxes that we have a lot. You're supposed to protect them against skunks, but you suck, so we didn't. You protect them against skunks, because you guys think skunks are fun. Anyway, <laughs> whiskey, lie down. Thank you. I want to see tequila. Or come this way, whatever. Doesn't matter, whatever works. So training a livestock garden is a little bit different because they have to be able to think independently. And sometimes that means they have to completely ignore their handler because they have a job to do. And sometimes you'll be telling them to do something that is not going to be helpful in doing their job. So you might be calling them and they're busy driving off a coyote or driving off a fox. So they have to be a little more independent and they do have to be able to ignore you if they have to. You need to chomp, 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 chomp. She's a teething puppy. She's three and a half months old. She's teething. So because they need to be more independent and they need to be able to act sometimes in direct opposition to what you're saying, you have to kind of start out differently. So with Livestock Guardians, I kind of have four pillars of four fundamental pillars that I need to build with her before we really start training. So those four pillars are love, trust, respect, and understanding. And those go both ways. So I'll talk about each one and their importance and how we build them. So let's talk about love first. I have to love her and she's gotta love me. Now I loved her from the moment I saw her picture because I love puppies. So that love is what keeps her from just taking off. So she's outside looking after her critters and looking after her property and there has to be some basic love and loyalty there. But in order to gain that from her, we have to show that to her first. So I fell in love with her the very second I saw her picture. But gaining her love took a little bit more work. So you gotta get her to love you. You gotta get her to love whiskey. You gotta get her to love her critters. That's all very important. Gaining that love is just a matter of time and affection. You know, you have like a stitch in your butt. Yeah. She's shedding a lot right now. So you wanna gain their love. And the way you do that is be patient, snuggle her up, love her up, but don't do something that makes them nervous because if you're making them nervous, they can't love you. So calm, relaxed, happy, that's what you want to be doing. You want to gain her love by loving her first. And it's really important that she also learn to love her critters. So you want to be introducing her to the critters. You want to be introducing her to the critters. You want to be taking her around the critters. You want to for example, day one, we brought baby bunnies and put them on her and she fell in love with them. She loves the baby bunnies. All of this is really important. So you want to start out, before you worry about teaching her to sit or teaching her to come, you want to start out teaching her to love. If you're lucky, she's already got a good base for that from her breeder or from her mama. If you're less lucky, you have to do a little bit of work. 
to get your puppy's love. So focus on love. The next thing you want to focus on is trust. I have to be able to trust that when she takes off into the bush, there's a darn good reason for it. I can't be screaming at her to come back because she's busy tracing off, chasing off the coyotes. So I need to be able to trust her, and she needs to trust me. She needs to trust that when I'm calling her, I have a reason for it. I'm not just calling her to call her. She needs to trust that the things I'm doing are in her best interest. So when I'm grabbing her feet to clip her nails or whatever, she's got to have a fundamental trust because she's going to be huge. It's going to be a 100 plus pound dog. So she needs to trust that when I'm grabbing her and doing stuff that I'm not going to hurt her. She also needs to trust that I've got a good reason for asking her to do the things that I do. All right, so I don't call her once she's trained. I don't call her just for the heck of it. Okay, I call her if I want her near me, or I call her because um, there's something I want her to check out, or I call her just because I love her and I want to be able to touch her. I don't call her just for the heck of it. So she has to trust me, I have to trust her. Building up that trust can take time. So trust and the next pillar, respect, kind of go hand in hand, right? So gaining her trust is also about respecting her, respecting her boundaries, respecting the fact that she's a dog. She's a livestock guardian. She has stuff to do, okay? She doesn't have time for some of the standard doggy nonsense that you might uh, think about when you think about dogs. She's got a job to do. So I have to respect her breed, respect her needs, respect the fact that she is who she is, and I expect that she respects me as well. She respects what I have to say. She respects what I tell her to do. So trust and respect are two sides of the same coin. And in order to gain her respect, you're going to have to show her some trust. In order to gain her trust, you're going to have to respect her. So, for example, when we first got her, she had a hard boundary where she didn't like to be touched right here on the bum. She hated being touched on the butt. So, at first, we had to respect that. So, we would touch her to here because that's what she was comfortable with. And slowly, over about a week, we would go a little bit further. And now I can touch her butt all I want. She doesn't care. I can plop her legs. She doesn't care. I can do whatever. But she didn't like having her butt touched. And that was because where we got her from, there was somebody giving her schmucks in the bum, and she didn't like that. So it was a little while before she would associate me touching her butt with pleasant things, right? I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to rub you. Especially when you're sitting here with your butt towards me, i got to rub your bum. So trust and respect are really important for a livestock guardian. And it is more important that I trust her than actually she trusts me. Because if she's barking, i got to believe her. I have got to trust that she's got a reason for all the barky barks. And I gotta go check it out. I gotta go find out what's going on. I gotta go have her back. Because she may need me to have her back. So you need to trust your livestock guardian. You're not supposed to be a couch dog, but this is where we are right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you look great. We've been outside working all morning, so she's a little tired. And Whiskey just wants to be on camera. So, and the final pillar in my little group of training tricks is understanding. How can I expect her to do what I need her to do if she doesn't understand me? Okay, so how do you get her to understand you? Now, she wasn't born here, so I haven't had her since she was teeny. We didn't get her until she was about 10 weeks old. Closer to 12 weeks, to be fair. Um, so she was nearly three months old when we got her. So I didn't have her when she's that teeny little puppy, you know, the little tiny, well, not that her breed is ever tiny, but I didn't have her then. All right, so understanding is about making sure she understands the words that are coming out of my mouth. Because if she doesn't understand what I say when I say tequila come, how am I expected to have my dog have perfect recall? She doesn't even know what that means. So... You have to make sure your dog understands you. Now, if you have them from teeny tiny puppyhood, Whiskey's leaving, if you have them from teeny tiny puppyhood, then you can actually manage that easier because you can just talk to them. 
talk to them all the time. You chit chat with your puppy. Thank you for kicking me. But you talk to your puppies all the time, the way I talk to our kittens that we have. So talk, 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 talk. And it's just like with a toddler, they eventually learn to understand what you're saying. And that's important. They need to be able to understand what you're saying. So that is how we start. We talk all the time. I talk in complete sentences to her. Even if I don't think she's going to understand it yet, because she's starting to now. We've had her about two weeks, um, almost three weeks, and she's starting to get it. So she's starting to recognize her name when it's said in a sentence. She's starting to understand when I talk to Whiskey, she knows what that means. But it takes a lot of time. So I just talk to her like I would a person. And eventually they pick up on the important words. I don't expect her to understand every single word in a sentence. But if I say, where is tequila? She'll usually pop her head out of the bush because she knows I just asked about her. So that's what's important is to make sure she can understand what I'm saying. And the only way to do that is repetition, constant talk. Words should be coming out of your mouth all the time. Luckily, I like to talk. So I don't have a problem with that. You just chit chat the entire day. So she's out there while I'm working with the chickens and I'm talking to her, I'm telling her what I'm doing. I'm basically narrating my day for the dog. Just because the more words you use, the more words she'll understand. And most of us do have a fairly limited number of words we use in everyday conversation. All right, like I don't typically use the word onomatopoeia every single day. She doesn't need to know what that means. She needs to know the common words. So she's starting to know the difference between a chicken and a rabbit. Okay, if I say, where's the bunnies, she'll run over to the bunny area. If I say, where's the chickies, she runs over to the chicken shed. So she started to understand the difference there. She knows Shadowfax's name. Um, she doesn't know Arwen's name, I don't think. She knows when I call Arwen Goaty, that I mean Arwen the goat. But I don't think she recognizes the name Arwen yet, probably because I probably haven't used the name Arwen enough. But we're getting there. We are getting there and she'll figure it out because she's a smart doggy. So lots of talking because I need to be able to yell across three different acres. Look at all this hair. But I need to be able to yell across three acres. Tequila, find the goat. And she needs to be able to help me find the goat. That's her job to keep track of her flock. And if I can't find someone, it's her job to help find them. So I couldn't find one of our chickens. And so we did a chicken roundup. She's not quite good at that yet because she's a baby but we did a chicken roundup together and eventually she'll be able to do it without me that's her job her job is to protect and keep track of her flock why are you checking me checking me with little doggy feet hi <laughs> whiskey came back you having a snack <laughs> whiskey's just on my other side now he's just over here hey whiskey but this is about tequila not about whiskey and you smell like a skunk man don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, so understanding what I'm asking of her is probably right after making sure she loves me. Okay, loving me and me loving her is the most important um, component because that's what sets the base for everything else. But the second most important is understanding. She needs to know what I'm asking her. And I need to understand her. So when she's barking at me, I need to try and understand what she wants from me. If she comes bursting on the bush and stops right in front of me, tail held high, ears up high, I have to try and figure out what she's trying to signal. Because I expect her to try to understand my language, so I need to try and understand hers. Because we're never going to be able to speak each other's languages. I can't speak dog, she can't speak English. She can try, but she's not going to do it, she doesn't have the right vocal cords. So she can't speak English. <laughs> this is why we have to make an effort to understand each other. So understanding comes really, really high in my books. So for the first probably month after you get your livestock guardian puppy, it's all about bonding. It's all about love, trust, respect. And it's about getting her to recognize those words she needs to recognize. Or he, if your livestock puppy is a boy. Ours is a girl. I say she. So... It is really important that you just spend time with your new puppy. 
So you'll notice she's in the house right now because she's going to be able to go in and out because we have animals inside and outside. So we have cats and rabbits inside and whiskeys inside. And we have outside horse, goat, um, we're getting a sheep. <laughs> I'll let you know when that happens. But we are getting a sheep and we have obviously our chickens and our rabbits and our quail. So it's important for her that she goes in and out and that she sees all the animals. Because the last thing you want is to keep her outside for six months and then for the first time she encounters magic. You know, magic's an old guy, he's an indoor cat and I don't want to risk her thinking he's an intruder. So she comes inside, she goes outside. Anyone who's allowed indoors or outdoors is part of her flock. All right, so just because a cat lives in the house doesn't mean that cat is not a part of her flock. That cat is a part of her flock. And just last night, she drove off a couple of coyotes. She and Shadowfax. Um, Shadowfax is a little bit scary. <laughs> he screeches at people. So he and Shadowfax are actually our kind of our guardians so he's typically in his pen so he can't drive them off but he screams at them and then she goes on and puts a run on them um, luckily our coyotes are just a little bit smaller than she is now she's about 45 pounds right now um, the coyotes in our area are probably around 40 pounds uh, they're not huge they're kind of lanky but they're not huge here so we're lucky so she put the run on them. That's her job. So she comes in, she goes outside, she pretty much does that on her own schedule. She's in here taking a nap, but she has been spending her nights out sleeping in the barn. So she naps in the house during the day and she naps in the barn at night, which is her primary purpose. But when you are raising livestock guardians, you really want to spend your first three to four weeks just bonding. Bonding and making sure you guys have a language that you understand together. So she understands what I'm saying and, she, and I understand what she's trying to convey. That is really important. So yes, you want to do things like socialize your puppy and we have. Our neighbor has two dogs and we have had him bring them over and make sure that she understands that not every single critter that sets foot on the property is dangerous. And so she has to understand the differences and that just takes time. So yes, you have to do socialization, you want some obedience training, you need all of these things. But first and foremost, you need a bond because you're working together with your livestock guardian. This is not a I'm in charge and you do what I say kind of thing because that's not going to help you. You need a partner. So she is my partner on the farm. Her job is to do the things I can't do. So sniff out those coyotes, drive them off the property. Um, do her big dog barks and she's got a really deep scary bark. We'll see if I can catch it on video. It's She's only three and a half months old and it's a deep scary bark. But she'll do her deep scary barks to drive the foxes away. If she sees hawks in the area, she will growl and snap because we don't want foxes. I mean hawks. I already talked about foxes. But we don't want hawks circling our flock. So she is really, really good at doing those things. And right now she's playing dead. You're very good at it. Good doggy. If you're wondering why she has two collars, it's because this one fits her right now and this one is too big. But my dad bought her this one. It's a really nice, beautiful, expensive collar. But it's a little bit too big. Like I can stick my whole hand in it right now. And that's on its smallest setting. But this is for when she finishes growing up. And he just wanted to put it on her. Because um, we kind of love this pup. <laughs> yeah, kind of a little bit falling in love with this girl. So he bought her a really nice, beautiful collar. And that's why she's got two on, because this one fits her right now. So as soon as she's grown out of this one, she'll have grown into this one. So that's the only reason she's wearing two collars. Okay, that's the only reason. That's that's cat. She's hearing the cat outside. What's she doing? And she fell. Sorry, the cat was climbing the window. That was pretty funny. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. What a good dog. Yes, girl. I love you, too. Yes. So that's what we're doing right now is bonding with her. And I am going to show you in leash training. It's important. I am going to show you boundary training because, man, that's important. But at the beginning, bonding. Bonding, 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 bonding. We need to be bonded because I rely on her 
to help me here. Her job is to keep them safe. So that's the thing I want you to focus most on. At least that's what we focus most on. Now, of course, everyone has a different method. Not every training method works for every person or every dog, but it works for us. So that's what we do. We are bonding with this girl. Yeah, because you're using dead like Aggie. And this people. Yes. And this people. Yes, tequila and whiskey. Yeah, So that's what we do. I don't expect it to work for everyone. I'm sure someone is going to have something to say about it. But for us, that's what works. And that's how we're going to start. The very next thing that you want to work on after bonding, got to bond, got to trust, got to respect, got to love, and got to understand. Right after that, we work on leash training. Because even though your livestock guardian won't be on a leash very often, they need to know how to behave on a leash because sometimes you have to take them to a vet. Sometimes you might need to, um, I take her to auctions with me. So you'll have to get her to behave on a leash. So that's up next. But right now, all we're doing, bonding. And apparently napping on the couch. You look great. Yeah. You look great. You such a good girl. What a good dog. Best dog. Yeah, you two are the best. So that's about it for us here at Anderson Acres. We'll see you tomorrow.